Hi folks, welcome back to the Man Made Handmade channel. Well, after building the digger, I feel like I've mastered pneumatics now, and it's about time I moved on to something with a bit more power. Now I don't know a lot about hydraulics, but I know the best way to learn is buy a load of gear. I bought a hydraulic power unit, I bought a load of hoses, a load of fittings, and a hydraulic punch as well. This should get the workshop kitted out for these next couple of projects. Let's get into it. So I'm going to start by setting up the hydraulic power unit first. This is the one I've got, it has an 8 litre tank, a 1.5 kilowatt motor and a valve block in the middle. Mounted to the top is a double acting solenoid valve, more about these a little bit later on, fitted with a 3 8 female port each side. Now straight out the box we've got a little issue to solve. You notice it doesn't sit flat on the bench and that's because there's a clash between the drain plug and the surface. This means we're going to have to make some sort of sled or grillage for it to sit in. Now I've chosen to make this out in a unistrut, that means it's totally flexible, I can change or add to it at any time. While we're here, I've done a video on unistrut and its uses. If you're interested, click in the top right hand corner of your screens now. Now the 230 volt double solenoid valve is going to need a junction box mounted nearby. So I've fabbed up this bracket off camera and we're going to use some of the existing threaded holes inside the motor to attach it. Now then, time to get it all wired up. Now if you don't know anything about electric, stay well clear of this step. Uh, this is not an instructional video on how to do it, but the intention is to supply the junction box from the mains and then come from the box down to the motor with this linkage I'm installing now. Now we're going to need a way of controlling the double acting valve. So I've bought this winch control box, basically two buttons up and down, and this will get wired into the same junction box as before and it'll allow each side of the valve to be activated. Now when we send 230 volts from this controller down to one of the solenoids, that'll mean the valve will open and the oil will flow to that side. Folks, that's the hydraulic power unit all wired up and filled up. Next, we'll touch on the fittings and the hoses. Now I'm not going to lie, hydraulic fittings are an absolute minefield, hundreds of different types which look really similar. Here is what I've learnt so far. Nearly every component of a hydraulic system has a female thread, be it a motor, manifolds, valves, quick release couplers and even the hoses have them too. All what's left is to connect them together using these male to male fittings, they come in all sorts of sizes, equal and reducing and they have two sealing surfaces. Look. This inner cone shaped surface is used to connect them to hoses with a matching opposite cone and this surface on the shoulder here is used in conjunction with a bonded seal to seal it against a flat machine surface. Now then, a little bit about hoses, obviously they come in all kinds of lengths and internal diameters. I tend to stick with quarter inch since they are most flexible for working and storage in a little workshop such as mine. You can choose the types of ends ranging from straight, 90 and even 45 degrees. Now here's an example of me fitting a male quick coupler to the end of this hose using a male to male fitting and bonded seal. Now this hose is connected to my new hydraulic punch, which I hope to have working by the end of the video. So to turn this into a nice tidy install here in the workshop, I'll fabricate a purpose made bulkhead to hold two female quick release couplers. This will be fastened to the underside of my workbench and allow easy convenient access to hydraulic power when I need it. Some of you may have noticed 
that I've taken some inspiration from another video from a different channel on YouTube. There's no harm in this from learning from others. YouTube is a great platform for this. Eagle Eye viewers will notice a third connector has been added here. This is for when running a hydraulic motor, a case drain can be added later. This line has no pressure and it is a drain from the motor case during normal operation back to the oil tank. Because there's no pressure, I'm just going to use pneumatic tubing for this. Here's the hydraulic punch I mentioned earlier. It only needs one hose since there is a spring inside the cylinder for the backstroke. Here it is in operation. So folks, that's the end of the video. We've got the hydraulic punch all working now. However, we're not gonna stop there. We've got some great, interesting hydraulic projects coming up, so stay tuned. I wanna thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't, like if you did, and I'll see you in the next video.